Our task in the all true and any true exercise is to write two functions, an all true function and an any true function, each of which takes an iterable as an argument. You can see in our main function that we call all true twice and we call any true twice and assign the results of each to a variable a, b, c, and d. For each call we pass in a list. We know from the readings that zero evaluates to false and any non-zero integer evaluates to true. So, looking at this first list, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. We know those integers would evaluate to true, false, true, true, true. So, are they all true? No. And assuming we are evaluating each item one by one, starting at the beginning of the list, we know that not all the items are true as soon as we reach the first zero. We wouldn't have to bother checking the rest of the list to come to the conclusion that not all elements are true. In the second call, the list contains five ones, so they are all true. In this case, we would have to check them all. So for all true, what we need to do is look for a false value. If we find one, all true will return false. And if we don't, all true will return true. Any true works in the same way, except that we're looking for a true value. As soon as we find one, we return true. And if we reach the end of the list without finding a true value, we return false. Let's start with all true. Because we don't know the length of the iterable, we can't just check every item like this. So what we need is a loop. We need to loop through the iterable. For x, in iterable. You don't need to use x. You can choose any variable you like. Now we need our if statement to check if x is true. But really, we want to check if it's false. Remember, all true should return false as soon as we find one false value. If not x, return false. And this will end the function. It will return false as soon as it finds one false value. If it makes it all the way through the iterable without finding a false value, we know that all values are true and can return true. This is very common in programming. What we're doing is searching for a needle in a haystack. As soon as we find the needle, we can return an answer. If we never find it, we return a different answer. Another example. Let's say you had a baseball team and were wondering if the team had any players over 40. You can loop through the players and we'll assume players is a list of dictionary objects that include an age key. For player in players, if player age is greater than 40, return true. If we get to the end of the players list without finding someone over 40, we can return false. Okay, the any true function. It's the same except that we're looking for a true value. For x in iterable, if x, return true. If we make it all the way through the loop without finding a true value, we can return false. This if x is the same as if x equals equals true. But since every Python statement can be converted to a Boolean, we don't need to do this. It's like saying if true equals equals true, which is not wrong, but a bit redundant. Same thing up here. We could say if x equals equals false, but if not x is just a simpler way of saying the same thing. So let's run it. We should see false true, true false. And we do. Of course, there is no need to write these functions for ourselves. They already exist in Python. There's an all function and an any function, which work just like our functions. So we can delete these and run it again. And you can see we get the same result. So it looks like we wrote our functions correctly. Up next, you have a short reading on break and continue in loops, and then you'll create a word guessing game.